All right, so I've got an Excel file here that has three different worksheets, and they, they're all the same template, but their purpose is, or I guess I should uh, give it some background. So the use case here is, so I come from a background in clinical sourcing or healthcare supply chain sourcing, and uh, what I've done in the past is I've kept reports for uh, supply chain savings. So let's say we have a product category here like bare metal stents. We negotiate better pricing uh, year over year with uh, through a contract with uh, vendors, or maybe we get uh, our facilities get a better pricing tier. Maybe the group of facilities gets a better pricing tier, so we track the savings year over year. And so what we've got here is three different tabs, three different um, product categories, bare metal stents, uh, hemostasis, and then uh, passive closure devices. In the real world, uh, I've actually managed reports or Excel files that were 150, 200 of these uh, tabs. And so you can imagine how daunting the task can be if at the end of the month we need to upload savings to, uh, say, a corporate site or whatever for just one month. And what we really only need is this co-ID. We don't need the facility name and we don't need every month here from this report. We just need a given month, like let's say the latest month here, April. And then we need to report it to the specific initiative ID, which is in this case 20871. That is actually the name of the uh, tab, and each tab is named the initiative ID. And so what we really need is to transform all this, uh, create a file that's going to be three columns. The first column will be the initiative ID, the second column will be the co-ID, and the third column will actually be the, the uh, savings results from the April month column. Uh, furthermore, we need to concatenate all of these initiatives, uh, or i.e. each uh, worksheet tab, in uh, one, let's see, one in addition to the other. So we want three columns going all the way down to each, each initiative, each co-ID that actually has savings for that particular month. Uh, and then also we want to remove all the zeros. We want to make sure there's no blanks, no, um, you know, NAs or not as uh, not a number values in that upload file. It just needs to be all positive numbers for the savings in that particular month. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to use Python to do this instead of like VBA. For many years, I used VBA to automate a lot of the stuff. And then I've actually started using Python to do this. And it's been much more uh, robust in its ability to do this quickly. Uh, efficiently, effectively, and then um, a much more lightweight solution than just hundreds and hundreds of lines of VBA code. So let me flip over to uh, Visual Studio Code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to name that file. And then um, I'll save that as get Excel data. And then uh, I'll save that as a Python file. All right, so I'm going to use pandas, the pandas library for this. So I'm going to import pandas as pd. And then uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to, I'm going to set a variable for the uh, actual Excel file uh, here, this monthly savings report. So I'm going to use uh, spreadsheet file. And that's going to be equal. We're going to use PD Excel file. And in the parentheses and uh, quotes, I'm going to go get my path here to the file. And that's going to be over here. And I will control C, go back to my editor, and then control V. Now, one problem I have here is I need to turn these backslashes to forward slashes real quick. So I'm going to control F. And then, um, where's my backslash here? Okay, I'm gonna replace all the backslashes with forward slashes, and then uh, we'll be good to go there. So now I'm gonna put a forward slash here and uh, put the file name. That's gonna be monthly savings, right? And that's a XLS X file, all right. So now we've set this variable name that we can reuse instead of typing in this PDXL file and then the whole uh, path and file name every time we need to use that. So I'll save that. All right. 
So the next thing I want to do is set a variable name for all the worksheets. So we'll just use something simple, worksheets. And then I'm going to use spreadsheet file. Again, this is where this comes in handy. I don't have to write this or type that whole thing out. And then uh, that's going to be spreadsheet file dot uh, sheet names, right? All right. So I'm looking ahead and I'll explain this here in a bit. Uh, I'm going to use uh, appended data is going to be my variable name for an empty array. And this is going to be the array of data frames for each worksheet. So I've got that set. Okay, so this is where the fun begins. So I'm going to use this for loop to loop and iterate through each sheet in the workbook. So it doesn't matter how many sheets. There could be just three sheets like what we have, or there could be 150, 200 of these things. This for loop will iterate through each one and create a data frame for each sheet. So I'm going to say for sheet data name, which what I'm talking about here when I create this variable is that actual data name, or I'm sorry, that sheet name that is the um, initiative ID and in worksheets and so remember here our worksheets is each sheet name in the actual file so for each for the sheet data name for the sheet name itself in every worksheet we're going to run through this loop and so for, before I go any further I'm going to go ahead and uh, create this month variable and I'm going to set that to April that's going to be our that's going to be our the month we're pulling the savings for. So as I reuse the script every month, I can just change that value. And then I'll be using, since we'll be using the month name itself in several lines of code, I'm just going to go ahead and set that to a variable name of month. All right, so now I'm going to get uh, my first data frame. That's going to be DF equals PD for pandas. And then we're going to read Excel. And so there's going to be three arguments in the read Excel method here. Um, and that's going to be spreadsheet file, which is the, the first um, argument, which is going to be the, uh, the actual file we're, we're reading. And then the next argument is going to be the sheet that we're reading from. And we're going to use sheet data name to get that. And then we're going to set header to equals two. And what this is referring to is if we hop back over, uh, since our headers aren't actually on the top row, uh, we have to use uh, header equals two, and this is counted uh, on a zero index. So uh, row one is going to be index zero, row two is going to be index one, and of course row three is going to be index two. That's why header equals two. So when we get deeper into this, as we are, um, we're going to actually be identifying the columns that we want to pull into our data frame. We're going to need to use that header row row two uh, to uh, be able to name like co-ID and the month. Otherwise, it's not going to recognize it because it won't be on the right row. All right, so this is where we go ahead and do that. We'll say data, DF, data frame equals DF, and then the columns that we want, co-ID. So we're limiting the columns that we want in our data frame out of all that other. And... We'll use month. That's the month variable. So that will be the April column. And so let me do something here real quick. Let's uh, look and see what this looks like. I'm going to comment this out actually out right here. Kind of take a look at how far we've come uh, in the uh, script here. And then we're going to use, I'm going to print. Actually, yeah, I'm going to print data frame. All right. So let me save that. So let me go ahead and I'll type Python. Get Excel data.py. All right, so that's a lot of stuff there. So what it did was it printed every column from each of those sheets. And notice you got a lot of these NAN values. This is not a number value for all those months that didn't actually have values at that point. But you see our January, February, March and so forth. If I go over here, we have this index column that pandas automatically sets for us. And then we have this NAN column here. If you remember um, this, we have this A column that's actually blank. So that's what that is. And then our co-ID column, our facility column. So here's the deal. So the next, you know, this is what we get if we just print the entire data frame. If we don't limit the columns, 
this is what we get. But when uh, I type in that code where we limit the columns, I'm about to uncomment that. You'll notice that now that's just saying, just give me the co-ID column and give me the April column. And so let's, uh, let's uncomment that. Let me go back over here. And then now I'm going to print this. And then we'll save that and we'll run it again now and do that. All right, so cool. So now you see we've just got the index column, the co-ID column, the April column for each of those uh, data frames. And so you notice that the index starts at zero again for each of those sheets. And eventually we're going to set that to where we have a column before co-ID that's going to be the actual initiative ID. All right, so moving right along, let's get to the next piece of business. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is, the other thing I didn't show you is, we've got these zeros in our April column. We wanna remove those, and the way we do that is we'll just continue with this line of code here where we have um, limited the columns, and it'll be dot where, and that's gonna be where the data frame month this is the column this is not saying the month value this is saying the month column the values in the month column which is our our savings right is greater than zero and so i'm going to save that and now we'll run this again and we will see our okay so our zeros have been transformed to this nan not a number so the zeros have been removed or I don't know maybe say masks notice the co-id is also showing in a n uh, there's a way to actually fix that too and I'm going to address that here in the uh, next couple of lines of code actually I can do that in the next line of code so the way we do that is we say data frame is now going to be equal to data frame but drop in a so we'll use this drop in a and then uh, save that let's run it again and then those NANs will be gone. So you see here we've got our co-ID in April. Notice here that the those um, index numbers are now not in order. There's a few missing, that zero and that one. If we go back up here, you'll notice the zero and the one were NAN. Well, down here, those are now, they've now been removed. So now we only have non-zero positive values in the April column showing and then their corresponding co-IDs. All right, so we're moving right along. Now what we need to do is we need to add that um, initiative ID column. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take data frame and then column, I'm gonna name it init ID. And so that's basically saying, okay, now we've got a data frame column named init ID. What's it gonna be used for? So I'm gonna say equals sheet data name. And remember, sheet data name was the actual name of the worksheet tab. And so it's going to take that value, which was the initiative ID, and for every row in that column for init ID, in that iteration, it's going to take the sheet data name and place it as the value. And then uh, actually one more thing we want to do is I'm going to uh, now set the data frame and equ uh, equals all of my um, columns but i'm going to set establish the um and that's going to be double uh square brackets it's going to establish the order of the columns now so otherwise this init id column would just be added on to the end which would be on the right side of the april column so i need to just specifically put the order that i want these in the current data frame and then that's going to be co-id and then this will be the month. All right, so we've reestablished the order and we which we want those, and now I can print this again. We'll run it, and we'll see that we now have that uh, init ID column, which is for every row is gonna be that sheet name, which is the initiative ID, and then it's gonna be the first column now. And so let me run that script. All right, cool, so you see it here, init, um, init ID. Co-ID, April. And so notice it, each one of those is its own sheet name, which is the initiative ID. And so that's looking really good there. So that's what we want. 
we are moving uh, right along. The next thing I need to do is I need to take all of these data frames and put it in a this array that we set this variable for. So appended data. Append is the method, and that's going to be data frame. So now we're done with a loop. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Um, this actually is appending each sheet name. So it's a, an array of sheet names, but there are th those are, um, data frames are associated with those sheet names. So what we need to do now, so we need to set this appended. I'm, I'm just going to reuse the, the uh, variable name, appended data, and that's going to equal PD. We're going to concatenate using concat each uh, element of that array. So it's basically saying for each element of that array, which is the sheet name itself, it has a data frame associated with it. So we want to reset the appended data variable to the concatenation of each one of those data frames. So next thing we want to do is uh, we want to make sure the uh, initiative ID number is actually set to a number value. And so we're going to take the appended data in that one column, which is init ID equals PD. to numeric and then again we're just going to say that's for appended data the init id column okay so the next thing that we need to do is we're going to put the data frame the concatenated data frames for each of the worksheets into a new excel file we're going to name it we're going to save it well we're going to yeah save it uh, and name it the way we want to name it and so we need to take that existing appended data frame, which is appended data, and then to Excel is the method. And then that's just going to be our new file name, including the path. So I'm going to use the same path. So I'm going to control C, put that in here and I'm just going to say I'm going to name that um, savings upload and then I'm going to use the month I'm going to put the month in the name so I'm going to close those quotes plus month plus and then uh, space 2019 so it'll say April 2019 XL SX and this is really all I need. I will put a, uh, I'll print a message to the console and then uh, we'll just say upload file created. All right, so this should work. All right, so I'll control S to save that. Hop back over to the prompt. I will run this again. Actually, uh, real quick, um, I'm gonna close this file. You don't actually have to have this open. And so note here that this is the folder that this is going to get saved to. This is that, that file that I just closed. Uh, I'm going to run this and, and there's our message upload file created. If I go over to the folder, there's our file. Let's click that or double click that to open it. And I'm going to have an issue here. It's actually going to have that index column that I did not want. I need to go back and I need to fix that. And the way I do that, first of all, let me just go ahead and close this. And then I'm actually going to delete that because we're going to generate a new file here in just a moment. All right. So one thing I failed to do is uh, I can add a second argument to this to Excel method. And that's going to be index equals false. And that'll remove that uh, index column. So I'll save that. Let's hop back over here. Let me run this again. File created over here. We see it's created. I'm going to open that. All right, so we've got our file with just the three columns, our init ID, our co-ID, our uh, April savings. And as we scroll down, we see that we get one for each initiative, each co-ID, and the savings. So you can imagine if, again, if this were like some, you know, 150, 200 uh, worksheets, this could be a very uh, robust uh, way to 
generate this file rather than use, using VBA. So there you have it. Thanks for watching.